Today we're, we're standing here in, in Lower Fish Creek. We came to visit it because we got water in it today. Uh, we're wrapping up the irrigation season and we're about to go into the winter season when flows might be limited. Lower Fish Creek is important because it used to be a blue ribbon fishery. Over the course of the millennium drought, we've had to cut flows off during the winter time. And so we've lost that blue ribbon status and it doesn't fish as well as it used to anymore. The health of the fish in the fishery all depends on how much water is here during the winter time. Winter is the limiting factor. If there's no winter water, then we don't get recruitment of brown trout. And it's primarily been a, a really good brown trout fishery in the past. We have a lot of other species. Uh, we see tiger trout, we see cutthroat trout. Because flow is the limiting factor in creating blue ribbon fishery in Lower Fish Creek, we were looking for ways to improve that. In 2015, the carbon power plant decommissioned. Part of that decommissioning reverted water rights to a canal company that had done salinity work with the Bureau of Reclamation, which didn't allow them to divert that water in the winter anymore. So Carbon Canal Company came to me and asked if I could lease the water. It was a perfect opportunity, perfect storm for us to be able to put water back in and try and recreate a blue ribbon fishery. Once the irrigation season wraps up, historically we've had to close the gates on the dam and store as much water as possible, which means there's not very much water in here for fish during the winter time. That limits them and their ability to reproduce and keep a good fish population going. So most of the water in Utah is tied up and, and used for all kinds of really useful purposes. Because it's all tied up, it's really hard to get an in-stream flow lease. So getting an in-stream flow lease here in a place that has been a blue ribbon fishery and hopefully will be again is a really big deal. Doing an in-stream flow lease is a bit complicated. We needed a partner like the Division of Wildlife to come in and help us execute the in-stream flow lease. So DWR holds the lease, Trout Unlimited manages the lease, and manages the payments to the canal company. So landing that in-stream flow lease, it didn't solve the problem because we still have to be able to get the water into the stream. The gates on the dam at Schofield Reservoir uh, have minimum openings that are too big to be able to let out our in-stream flow lease. If we let out the small amount of water that we were leasing, it cavitates the concrete on the dam and that's a big problem. So we needed to find a different solution to releasing water during the winter. And we came up with a couple of different options. Those options were uh, siphoning over the spillway, pumping over the spillway, or drilling a hole through the gate chamber into the air shaft of the dam and putting in a gate to let low amounts of water out during the winter time. Once we came up with those three options, we worked with uh, Carbon Water Conservancy District who manages the dam and the Bureau of Reclamation who owns the dam to present the three. They selected the third of the three, drilling a hole through the gate chamber into the air shaft so we could release low amounts of flow through the winter without causing any damage to the infrastructure. To do work on the dam, there can't be water flowing through it. So we had to wait for winter time when the gates were closed and no water was being released from the dam. So it was middle of the winter, 20 below. We had crews out drilling through the concrete and getting a gate in as soon as they could before runoff and we needed to release water. Now moving forward, Trout Unlimited will work with Carbon Water Conservancy District, the Bureau of Reclamation, the River Commissioner, and uh, any others that this affects during the winter time to make sure that we are dialed in on releasing three and a half CFS through the winter and trying to keep this fishery alive. We're really grateful to our funding partners on this. We're also really grateful to our project partners, Johansson and Tuttle Engineering, who did the engineering work, Bodek Construction, Carbon Water Conservancy District, all who pitched in to, to help do this, as well as the Bureau of Reclamation, who owns the dam and reviewed all of our plans. And finally, we're really grateful for the Carbon Canal Company for incorporating Trout Unlimited in their, in their thoughts and in their plans when they had a problem to solve with the water right, and we were able to step up and help out. It's really amazing what happens when people come together and to, to solve a problem with the Blue Ribbon Fishery, to help offset water use in other places, and to, to solve people's problems with water rights. This project comes together to, to really make a win-win-win situation for everybody. And with this innovative approach, we're confident that we can bring Lower Fish Creek back to being one of Utah's Blue Ribbon Fisheries.
Thank you.